Frog, flies right off the ground. Frog was a well-known British model company that made both flying and scale model aircraft kits that went to market in 1932. It would later make models of other subjects until its demise in 1976, although its molds were still used by other companies and by some reports still are. The company was originally founded in 1931 by Charles Wilmot and Joe Mansour as International Model Aircraft Limited, or IMA. IMA used the FROG brand as an acronym for Flies Right Off the Ground as a way to help emphasize the model's abilities. The company's first model was of the fictitious Interceptor Mark IV. The box consisted of a fuselage with tail surfaces already attached, two undercarriage legs, two wings, one rubber band and a dowel stick, two oil bottles, a propeller with a gearbox, a winding handle, a set of instructions, and a caution notice. In 1933, they followed up the Interceptor Mark IV with the Frog Pus Moth. These models look good, and the Pus Moth was a model of a real aircraft, but compromises to scale and accuracy had to be made in order for the model to fly correctly. But in 1936, Frog did something truly different. They made the first plastic scale kit models, and a new business was born. Called Penguins because they did not fly, this small line of just three display model kits gave birth to the scale model industry that came to be part of so many people's childhoods and often entire lives, mine included. The kits were of an Armstrong Whitworth scimitar, a Rota autogyro, and the short Singapore flying boat. They were in 1 to 70 second scale and were made from cellulose acetate. These humble kits are where it all began. They were the world's first plastic scale models. Frog would continue to introduce more kits until the outbreak of World War II. Like pretty much every other industry in Britain, Frog's work was disrupted by the Second World War, but they were in a position to be of service to the war effort. The company manufactured flying models as moving targets for training purposes and 1 to 70 second scale aircraft recognition models. This allowed Frog to introduce a few new kits during the war, such as the Tempest. Following the war, they went back to their penguins made of cellulose acetate, as well as added a few new ones made of wood. They also continued some of their flying models. Wood display models were still very common. In fact, companies like Monogram in the USA were still almost completely wooden kit makers. We must also remember that Britain was still on a rationed economy following the war and many resources were not readily available. Additionally, the cellulose acetate was showing some problems with durability and warping. According to the Lines Brothers Limited toy manufacturer records, the International Model Aircraft Limited, Frog, and Penguin Catalog were all added as a supplement to the Lines Brothers Limited 1948-49 handbook. So in 1949, IMA Limited, the parent of Frog, came under the trying umbrella. This is when the Penguin line was dropped. Frog started making polystyrene kits in 1955, a few years after their chief rival, Airfix. They released nine new styrene kits that year, followed up by 33 more by the end of the decade. They had 32 aircraft models and a kit of the Bloodhound missile. The race for kit model dominance was on, but there was a problem with their name. The model business is an international one, and a company has to be alert to cultural sensitivities. The name Frog was considered insulting to the French, who represented a substantial market. The parent company, Trying, used the airline's name to sell the Frog kits. This was a subtle way to get the Lines Brothers' name on the packaging without being too overt. Frog only added two new kits in 1961, and they were both ships. In 1962, they added four more kits, including their first ever model cars, the Ford Console Cortina, and the Vauxhall Victor. In 1963, they picked up the pace by introducing 18 new kits, as model building was rapidly becoming a major hobby with men and boys alike. They issued another 15 models in 1964, which would be the last of the new kits imported to France under the Trying brand. They slowed to only three new kits in 1965, including a model of the British R-100 airship with mooring mast. 
The rest of the 1960s showed slow internal kit releases, but they did expand their presence a bit by making 25 different kits for AMT in America and by acquiring 25 former Hasegawa kits in 1968. But the real problem came in 1971 when IMA's parent company, now Rovex Triang, entered receivership. It was acquired by Dunby Comebacks Marks in 1972. It did not help that also in 1972, another domestic competitor, Matchbox, had joined the fray with 16 new kits. This was in addition to the aggressively growing Airfix, and that does not even get in the competition for both America and Japan. But Frog kept chugging along until the last Frog-branded kits were boxed in 1976. The last kit they made appears to be this Lockheed Ventura. In 1977, many of the frog molds were sold to the Soviet Union and marketed under the name Novo. The Russians did not want molds of aircraft that were used by fascist regimes, so those molds went elsewhere, some to Revell. Frog's 172nd scale lineup by the 1970s included a large number of lesser known aircraft types that were not available from other model manufacturers at the times, as well as some 132nd scale fighters and 1 to 450 scale battleships. In more recent years, some X Frog Novo kits had been reissued by Revell and various Eastern European manufacturers. Sadly, some of the molds have ended up in conflict zones, and there's an ongoing mystery about the eventual disposition of a few of the molds that seem to have gone walkabout. There are also some organizations that are dedicated to keeping the frog name and kits going, so even if the old company is gone, its soul remains, along with some of its kits. So what was your experience with frog? Share it with us in the comments below. This is Max. We'll see you later. Frog! Frog! Don't worry! I'll save you! I am prepared for any situation! If you are lost in the dark, you are lost in the dark, and your fingers are starting to freeze, I have a light that will cut through the night so you won't bump your head on the trees. Or if you are deep in a hole, you are stuck in a hole, and no one can hear as you shout. I'll bring a rope, a thick piece of rope, and use it to help pull you up. I am not afraid. Well, I am, but I'll be brave. Frog, 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 frog. You are the one I'm going to save. If there's a wolf at your heels, giant wolf at your heels, and you're running as fast as you can, I'll stop the wolf. I'll, in fact, bump the wolf on the head with a big frying pan. I am not afraid. Well, I am, but I'll be brave. Toad. The one I'm going... Frog, you're here. You're not lost in the woods? No. You're not stuck at the bottom of a hole? No. You're not being chased by a wolf? No. Well, where have you been? <laughs>